Hello and welcome to another edition of IAB Cal Voices. I am James Lodging, your host, and I used to work in the insurance industry for 11 years for the Big Eye of California. I worked for the education division called Insurance Skills Center. Not there anymore, but I did work there for 10, 11 years, and it's a wonderful people doing amazing things in the business. One of the things that we need to worry about and work on is perpetuation, keeping the business going with new blood all the time uh, and bringing them in and people in the business mentoring and shattering people who are younger and bring, keeping it going forward. So I have a person and a guest on the show who is a, let me say this correctly, he's a commercial and personal insurance broker for Shaw Moses Mendenhall Associates here in, in Southern California, so we're not far from each other. Um, and we're gonna talk about that and find out a little more about him and you know, how he got into the insurance business. You might as well start from there. Please help me welcome Mike McGilbray. Hi, Mike, how are you? Hey, James, thanks for having me on. Yes, thank you. Now, first of all, I'd ask everybody, because you know we're in Southern, you and I are in Southern California, um how are you doing <laughs> doing well i mean I, we, you know we're we're grateful we've been very very busy you know not all of that is is uh new business it's a lot of client maintenance and service but um you know we're very very fortunate we've got some great clients here so it has been a really busy year but we're we're doing fantastic really well you know client maintenance is just as important right making sure clients are happy that their policies are all updated you know, business. Business, right right business, Absolutely. business business i mean it's kind of it all makes the the wheel move i think i'm mixing metaphors it's like some of the squeaky wheel or something i don't know something like that going on but it it helps the yeah. big machine right uh, take no it. question because, well because p insurance is people isn't it it's people business service business people business absolutely yeah yep never forget that folks never forget that uh, i want to ask you for you because i ask people on this show and i get so many different answers when i do this show how did you find your way into the insurance brokerage business so how many people have answered that question by saying by accident or I well, fell into about, it? About, about 70%. Yes, yeah, about 70% of people, 80% of people on the show. Yes. <laughs> so maybe we just worked that up to 71% because I fell into it by accident. And what happened was, you know, I, I had done some things previously and I didn't make it. I was in the financial industry when, you know, the in that housing crisis back in, in 2008, 9, and 10. I didn't oh, make yeah. it through that crisis. So, you know, I, I had to go. And in, in the meantime, trying to think of what I was trying to do, my father's in the business. He's been in the business. I think he's now in his 47th year. Um, wow. I finally said, okay, no one's hiring in finance. So dad, what's this insurance thing all about? Because I had a very different perception of what insurance was and I didn't want to do what dad did. So I, you know, I thought I'd wear a plaid <laughs> jacket with elbow pads and I'd be walking, selling life insurance door to door. I mean, I thought that's what he did day to day. Where's your briefcase, Mike? Where's your briefcase? Yeah. Oh, a little beat up briefcase too. So I, I respected him, you know, for what he did. Wow, dad, that's hard to do. Well, I had no concept of what it was. My only regret is I didn't get in the business earlier, but finally I said, dad, show me a little bit about this insurance thing. I'm interested. I have known most people at my firm for a long, long time since my father's been here for so long. So he brought me into it and you know, it's, it's been a family. So I had no intention of getting into insurance. Wasn't even a consideration until finally, you know, as a legacy, a second generation, of course, we have many, many third, fourth, fifth generations. That's how I got in. Well, you know, Mike, so I, I want to talk about that for a second because I'm a person who came from a whole different field too and then got into insurance and now I've left insurance and now I'm in the media. I mean, I know the, so for you, I just want to know the process for you when you were like, okay, I remember 2008, 2009, 2010. I remember that whole time period. That's why I changed my life also um, in terms of business. What kind of went through your head in terms of trying to find what to do next? I'm kind of curious about that. What was it in your head at the time? Number one, stability, no question. And when, you, when you're in an industry like that and you go through a crash like that, the first thing I'm thinking is, you know, I thought I was safe. I thought I either would have another job I could find. So I wanted something that was stable, something almost almost recession proof, you know, in a way. So when you, when you go through an actual crash like that, and we had a lot of layoffs in the financial industry that was all over the news when the crisis hit, companies didn't know what to do. So for me, stability was, I, I wanted a career. I had planned on being in the financial industry for years. I thought that's what I was going to sure. do. So um, I wanted to find something that would be a career, something that if I'm going to invest time in, that I'll, I'll still be there for, God willing, 15, 20, 30 years. So stability was a huge thing. And that, that did leave a mark on me. I mean, I'd be, just to be really candid, you know, when, when, you, when you don't make it in an industry because of a crash 
and you see all these people around you getting let go, you do start to think, I got to find some stability. And, and that industry just wasn't it, especially at that time. Yeah. So that was a huge, huge factor. I like that. That was probably number one before I knew anything about insurance. That was number one. Stability. You're like, okay, I got to find something that's going to be stable. We can last for a while and possibly enjoy doing it. I mean, right. I mean, right. right. I mean, it's kind of a, you know, I know we think, we think of other stuff first. We got to figure out, you know, can I do this? Will I want to do this for a while? You know, do I, would I want to stay in it? So you, you found, you found insurance. You fell, you fell head first. Into fell it. Head first. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. Well, head first. The, the dismount was a little rough, but it's it's been fantastic ever since. So, no problem. <laughs> um, I mean, okay. So, give me a couple a couple of reasons why you've enjoyed being insurance for the last basically decade or so. Why why you've enjoyed it? Number one, people business. I love I, what I really in the insurance and all the minutiae is one thing, and we do have to obviously everyone has to learn that and know that. Um, what I liked about the financial industry and positions I had previous to that is I love the people aspect of it. I love having anybody I can talk to at any given time or place become a client. So it becomes like a family. So the, the people aspect of it is huge. And I wanted something where I was in front of people talking with people all day. Uh, I do see clients like a family. So I love that aspect of it. Um, so that was, that was number one. Then when I, when I really, figured out what I could do in this industry, this, the way that, that life is structured, the life work balance. There were a lot of other things that appealed. So while stability got me there, uh, there's a lot of things that are keeping me here. So uh, I love the people aspect about it. I mean, it's my favorite, favorite thing. I get to talk to these fantastic people all day long, you know, and sometimes the news that we deliver might not be, you know, we, we like to say here, there's no good or bad news. There's just news. So um, I love talking to them every day. I really do. How's it been during COVID? How's, how's that changed for you? Because it's now it's mostly this. Right. It, it's been different. Uh, I miss the interaction. I miss the face-to-face, -face, of course. It's been challenging on the claim side. There are claims that I never thought I'd ever have to put in. Oh, wow. Uh, that I've, I've put in several. So um you know it's certainly been a little different now i think you know we've pivoted pretty well i think people are pretty good through the glass now and uh i couldn't find a webcam for the longest time <laughs> they were like, sold out everywhere game? where's the yeah thing yeah right should have bought stock in webcams but, <laughs> you know we're i think everyone's doing a great job pivoting you know through the glass and and um you know, when we're able to see clients, obviously we, we do it with masks on. I love the people in the insurance industry. I do miss all the industry events. I do miss seeing everybody uh, on a day-to-day -day yeah. basis. But you know what, what COVID's brought is just a lot more service, a lot more questions from clients and uh, a lot more that we have to do behind the scenes for them. But that's, that's why we're in the business. So it's, it's when they need us most. And uh, we've been fortunate enough to be able to, to lend them a hand. Which is kind of a, a insurance model. You're there when people need you most. A lot of times, when a company yeah. needs you most, people need you most. Usually, that's when insurance comes to play. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So this kind of just follows falls into that. Um, perpetuation. That's something I touched upon with a couple of people in the industry. We want new blood coming in and uh, new people being um, being mentored and you know and brought through the ranks. Um, just just in just a general in general. How important is perpetuation in the insurance industry? Huge, insurance industry? huge, huge. It, it is one thing that I'm really, really passionate about. So when, as I got further into the business, uh, you'll hear certain stats that come up. And, and, you know, a lot of this in various, at various IAB Cal events, we've talked about this, that, you know, in, in uh, people 55 years and older in, in our business, uh, that percentage has increased 74%. So 74% of the professionals in our business are 55 years and older. And in the next five years, 25% of them are going to be at retirement age. Almost 400,000 new jobs are going to be opening up within the next 10 years, you know, by, by uh, 2032 or 2028, I believe the stat was. So yeah. we have this huge, huge hole that's going to be opening up and it's also an exciting time though for perpetuation because there's a lot of things going on. There's a lot of colleges and universities starting programs and getting involved. So we're now, we now have a talent pool that we didn't have before. It's been on the East Coast for a long time. 
Georgia is a great example. They have a fantastic insurance program at the University of Georgia. Uh, Pennsylvania's Wharton School, they have a terrific insurance program through, through Wharton. West of the Mississippi, there wasn't much going on until you know about maybe 10 years ago or so, where now you're seeing kind of an emergence of schools, colleges and universities putting together risk management and insurance programs. So we're now able to have a little bit of penetration with the student population and introduce the business to them because we have to do something about this 400,000 you know, job gap that we're gonna see. So I'm considered a young guy in the business, right? I love that, I love hearing that, but I'm not a young guy. So you know, I think one of the most exciting things that, that is happening right now, you, you see schools like Fullerton, Northridge, Sacramento State, uh, San Francisco Insurance Academy, Southwestern College, Okay. USC has a program. I sit on the, the uh, advisory council for our risk management program at our Marshall School of Business. Tremendously proud uh, to be a part of it, humbled by it, uh, very, very proud of, of the steps um, and what's been accomplished at USC. And a lot of these programs didn't exist before. So that's a really exciting thing. So on the one hand, we have this enormous gap that we're going to have to fill. I mean, 400,000 jobs, but it also brings enormous opportunity for a lot of these younger students and even people, you know, that may be younger, but haven't gotten into the insurance business yet. Yeah, that's interesting. I essentially thought that, you know, there's certain industries, like I said, are, are kind of almost foolproof and insurance is one of them, you know, medical insurance, there's so mm -hmm. much, there's always kind of, but, med, but insurance is one of them. Um, I guess doing the show is one of the reasons why I'm trying to, not to make it sexy or anything like that, but like just make it more that's not so stiff, that insurance is just part of life and that right. the insurance industry is part of life. So what are some what are some things you would tell people to kind of, you know, may not make it sound so boring? Like you said, misconceptions like you did. Yeah, misconceptions. Yeah, well, I think it's, it's you know, when insurance is done correctly, you know, when it's brought down to a more human level, especially with clients, you know, it's, it's you can help kind of help them craft this nice little ice sculpture, so to speak, right? But if you don't have the right ingredients and the right coverage, it's like, you know, cutting the arm off of that, that sculpture. And I think th there is a problem, I think, uh, this is my opinion, but with education, educating clients, educating the new, you know, younger maybe agents or brokers coming up, really explaining coverage. So I think a lot of people, unfortunately, they have this conception about the insurance industry that it's this big, huge corporate monster. Right. No one pays out on claims. They're just there to take my money. <laughs> Where in reality, when that happens, it's in, in the case a claim isn't triggered, you know, coverage isn't triggered for a claim. It's usually because the coverage isn't in the policy, it wasn't added. So it's, I, I think there's a little bit of perception of this industry as this, you know, enormous corporate monster, which, you know, certainly it it's, it's corporate. Yeah. But, you know, it really is there to help people. And at a time, you know, we always say in the, at the firm, you know, the true cost of insurance is not having it during a claim situation where you might have to pay out of pocket. So, you know, it's, it's making sure all the coverage is there. But I think it's not just educating clients. I think it's also changing the perception the younger generation has of insurance. I'm no different. I saw a lot of commercials just about saving money, saving money, saving money. And I just had this perception of the insurance guy as this, you know, as I, the guy walking door to door down the street, jacket with elbow pads and the, you know, here, buy some life. In life insurance, you need it. It's an amazing thing and we have to have it. But I think there's just kind of a perception that a lot of, and I've talked with students at USC about this. You know, we ask them, what's your perception of the industry? Um, you know, and then a lot of them think the same way. Well, we don't want to sell auto insurance. Well, of course we need that. It's an yes. important part of the industry, but it's not all the industry is. So I think education to help change and alter that perspective is really helpful. Um, and I, you know, everyone in our USC program has all of, all of the council members are mentors to the students. Every student in the program has a mentor. And my, men, my, mentee, uh, my mentee last year who really wanted to work for a hedge fund. And I just told him, keep an open mind, you know, let me know if I can help. He actually ended up in risk management because he was exposed and educated really to what the industry is, how he can help companies, other people, uh, and he loved it. So he went and did a complete 180, and we weren't forcing him into any direction, just told him, keep an open mind. Uh, if it's hedge funds, it's hedge funds. If it's risk management, great. Hedge funds would be lucky to have you. 
and he, he pivoted and went over to risk management. So, I, you know, and, and the students were really excited about it. They loved the content, which surprised me. I mean, I didn't know how engaged they would be, but they just absolutely love it. So I think, you know, there's some education that we can, we can help get out there, maybe change some perceptions in certain areas, my opinion. Well, you know, the thing, well, no, the thing is, I mean, insurance is a vast industry. So it's not just one thing. There's so many different types of insurance and it's even growing. I used to an interview with the uh, insurer who insurance is, you know, shipping insurance and, and school device insurance. I mean, there's like, there's yeah. truck insurance. There's, I mean, it's like, there's, I mean, insurance, there is some fun stuff out there um, that's very useful to the public, to the segments of the public. So it's right. not just, you know, property casualty or health, life and health. There's all kinds of, there's all kinds of stuff even within that too. There's stuff within that. So I think people right. need to get out there, need to get out there. Absolutely. Right. But I think when they see how well-rounded it is, and then of course they always ask about the lifestyle, you know, they want to work life balance. They want to be able to work on their own, on their own time. I mean, you know what? We can do that now and accommodate a lot of these, you know, especially these students, these younger kids that want to get into it. So, you know, so I think, I think we're on the right track in a lot. I mean, it's a, like I said, it's, there's a huge gap opening up, but it's probably one of the most exciting times too, because of this emergence within these educational institutions developing their own programs. Well, you bring up a good point because I am, I am an old man. I, I admit it. I'm at 50. I'm an old man at this point compared to the rest of the world. I may look good for my age, but <laughs> I have certain things I was raised as a Gen Xer. I was raised certain ways, but I'm noticing um, some of the younger millennials and the Gen Zers, because we're talking about those are the college students we're talking about right now. Right. They have a whole different perspective on how totally. to work. You just said something that was, I hear it all the time, mm -hmm. but they, they want the work-life balance. Not saying we never, not saying that we, I never wanted it. I did want it too. I just accepted, you know, kind of what was given to me. Um, but I'm noticing the younger generations are looking to find ways of different types of ways to work too. Mm -hmm. um, and so you mentioned that. So are you saying that you're trying to find the industry, help the industry kind of mold around that for the younger students? Yeah, well, or at least let them know what we're already doing. So I, I think, you know, not that, I mean, I think maybe the one maybe positive that came out of the pandemic, not that there's a lot of positive, I, I, but, the one, <laughs> but the one thing that we, we were shown from the pandemic is I do know a lot of, you know, companies and industries were nervous about the teleworking, about people. Oh, yeah. Oh, are they going to be productive or not? And, and I think, you know, I was on a, a webinar last week where there was a huge discussion about it, which is, a lot of the studies show that people, that employees are even more productive sometimes at home. And I think the insurance industry has done a good job of pivoting and accommodating that. And I, you know, for, for younger, the younger generation to know that, yes, you know, in a lot of career choices you might make in this industry, you can work from home. Or if you have a laptop and a cell phone and a good internet connection and a VPN, you can, you can work just about anywhere you'd like to work. So you know, I think that's letting them know that. And I think, again, the industry's done a good job moving toward that. Um, but, you know, a lot of the, the younger generation, I know they also like choice. So if they'd like to come into an office, maybe they can come into an office. If they'd like to work at home, maybe they can work at home. What they like is the flexibility. Uh, what yeah. they don't like is the micromanagement. So yeah. if you empower them and let them know that, yeah, they just don't. So, and, and these, these, this younger generation is so smart. These students that we work with are so sharp. Uh, they're going to be smart enough to do that. So, you know, by empowering them, giving them flexibility and choice, to, which empowers them to make their own decisions, I think is huge. And I think they really like that. And I think our, our industry offers that in a variety of different areas. Yeah, you always hear about um, how well, I mean, I've talked to people in the industry, of course, on their show, especially, how they're able to be there for their son's soccer games and exactly. able to be there for family events, but also they can work a certain, you know. So yeah, this industry is good at that. A lot of industries are very strict. There's a lot of times where you just can't really, they're not flexible at all. You can't stretch anything out. Um, right. Insurance is different. The industry is different. And I want to leave that- Well, when talking, talking with these younger kids, they, they light up. I mean, they perk up when you say, yes, you know, you can, you can make your own schedule, you know, in a lot of areas in our, in our business. You can go to that event you want to go to in the middle of the day and come back. They yeah. love that. You, if you have a laptop and an internet connection and a phone, you can get your work done. They love that too. So it's it's all all positives, and we're we're going in the right direction for them. You know, I'm I'm a life coach. So I work with some clients who are younger, and a lot of them will say to me, um, 
I like the fact that my job that I can work at night. I work better at night. I get not mm -hmm. at night. I'm a night person. I'm just not a morning person. I don't wake up before ten. And you know, when I started coming out, that was that was a no no. You had to get up in the morning. Anybody? So, but now I'm noticing. I get it. Yep. Yeah, and I'm like, well, I understand. I, you know what? I understand that. And so you're saying there being if you're getting all the work done, and it's still getting done, and deadlines are being met. If there's deadlines, yes. then work with. Work, well, who cares if it's 3 p.m. in the afternoon or 6 in the morning? Like, like, like who cares? If, it's right. done, if I say by Tuesday at 5, I need that thing done, and it's done Tuesday at 4, I get it turned in, how you get there, that's on you. I mean, that's, I mean. Exactly. I, I kind of, I, li I like that idea. I like that it's not as strict anymore and that that's a sort of thing. Um, I want to mention the uh, IAB Cal Pathfinder project. Mm -hmm. let's, let's talk about that. What is that? And let's talk about it. Yeah, this is a huge, huge program. And first, hats off to the IAB Cal staff, Mike Work in particular, Mike. Um, and of course, Dave Banesh, Jen Pue. I mean, they, they've done just a tremendous job on this. So here's the, the genesis behind Pathfinder, which you'll see on the IAB Cal website. Um, the genesis behind that is because of now all these universities, these, these colleges and universities creating insurance and risk management programs, this this uh, the younger generation really being encouraged and wanting to know what's this industry all about. We really like it. How could we best create a bridge between maybe younger people that want to get in the business, maybe students, you know, to the professional industry. So what Pathfinder is, it's a recruitment and training development initiative. And for the IAB Cal members themselves, it's an initiative for member agencies or for IAB Cal members. Sorry, phones are ringing there. See, business going on, kids. Business, business going on at the same time, exactly. Um, so it's 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 a recruitment training development initiative. So it'll help member agencies hire, you know, or recruit new members for their firm. Our firm just went through. We hired a new uh, CSR at our firm. Where do you go to get a new CSR? You know, it's it's so specific. It's not always that easy to do. So what Pathfinder does is is it's almost creating a bridge between the younger generation or even those who may be new to the insurance industry and almost creating a bridge to the professional community and connecting them all together. So not only is it for member agencies uh, to hire and, and uh, recruit employees, but it's also to help those that are interested in getting into the business, to help them with training. We're gonna have training programs available uh, through Pathfinder. Uh, we're gonna have a jobs board on Pathfinder as well. So it's all about connecting people together and really doing it in a in a way that that just serves the industry well because this the if it's somebody new in in the industry you know just that wanted that wants to get into it they're going to have the training available to them you know in pathfinder at least some in introductions um so it's and and it's really exciting because it's being done at the time that these schools are developing these programs and these students at these schools going through the programs are already going to have a lot of insurance and risk management knowledge. So when being connected to member agencies, IAB Cal member agencies, they're going to have a, these agencies are going to have a great talent pool, uh, you know, of students or younger professionals to choose from. And these younger professionals are going to be able to network through Pathfinder, uh, receive this training, get connected to member agencies. And on the IAB Cal website, you can click the Pathfinder link to read more about it because I, I feel like a lot of things are coming together at the perfect time. Gamma Iota Sigma now is very involved in Pathfinder. Gamma Iota Sigma, of course, was at InsurePath doing our panel on insuring opportunity with, with Alyssa, uh, Dimpa, Steve, and Barbara. All of them, yes. yes. And they did a terrific job. So uh, Gamma Iota Sigma is also involved with Pathfinder. So are a lot of the universities uh, and colleges. And we, we haven't quite introduced everything yet to the community, but that's coming soon. Uh, so it's, it really, it's, I think it's the bridge that we need. You know, it's, it's, it's I, and I think it's coming again at, at the right time. It's really exciting. The, the I know, yeah, no, I, I believe in the village mentality. And I feel like it's like the village. It's like, you know, I know you're lighting, your lighting just changed all of a sudden. Uh, yeah, it goes off. It goes off. Right we, so we can still see you, we can still see you. It's fine. Perfect. Um, no, but the, it's, it's the village mentality where, um, you know, the people in the village look out for the younger ones and bring them in and bring them up and introduce them to you know, other mm -hmm. people in the village. And it's that whole thing of just, you know, lifting each other up and, and adding more. And I think that's why I think right. the Pathfinder thing is so wonderful. I mean, it's like, it's, if you, this, here's your path. 
so to speak. If you're going to find is your path into the well, industry. It, it cultivates professionals. And one of the things I think makes USC's program so successful is, is the involvement of the professional community with the students. Every student has a, has a mentor that's in, in the industry, well, in the business. Well, when we have events, which hopefully we'll be able to do maybe sometime next year, but in past events, you had a lot of professional community, professional industry people there. The students get to know them. They get to know the students because, you know, one of the things that member agencies, you know, are, are looking to do all the time, I'm sure, is where do we find new talent? How do we, how do we hire? Where do we go? You know, Big Eye certainly has a, a great jobs board there, but can, can we really go to Indeed all the time or how do we right. actually, know that. you know, certainly there's executive search firms that are great, right. but, right. Um, but I know, you know, the questions, I mean, even our firm hiring a CSR, where do we find the CSR? And then of course, students are always asking and, and people that are younger in the, in the industry, where can I find a career? Where can I find a job? Pathfinder is going to make that entire thing easier on both sides. I'm sorry, I'm old school. I like, I think it's nothing better than somebody who knows somebody somebody exactly. can recommend somebody because they get it's that per, back it's back to people again it's back to back to oh, people i know i know so and so so i trust his judgment if so and so is good if his mentee is good like you know what i mean like that i i can trust or that association i trust that association if they say so and so is good and they've been vetted so to speak we can kind of trust that they're, you know i like that i like the whole kind of we're just yes. all interconnected it's back to that then just blindly not so you can't find people but you can but instead of blindly being out there and trying to find is that person good is that person good is that person good? i mean right. i like i said i said to me it's an old school aspect but using new school kind of ways and technology new school technology and, and pathfinder is going to going to do that establish that network and cultivate it and it's very industry specific yeah. so it's it really is exciting and as more rolls out um I think it's going to be a fantastically successful program and it couldn't couldn't have come at a more perfect time than now because there there's a lot going on with these colleges universities and the younger generation finding out what our business actually is yeah yeah i'm noticing the colleges are they're adding uh, other industries too they're adding some stuff they're finally coming around so i'm glad we're I'm glad to see that that's happening because uh we want to get people who go to college more choice before right. we're told you go there you pick out of five six things you go that direction and that's it. No, there's a lot out there. And insurance is a nice option. Absolutely. It sure is. Um, lastly, I, I want to ask you, um, thanks for sharing all that. So last one I want to ask you, um, what is one thing you have learned about yourself uh, while working in the insurance industry the last decade? What a great question. One thing I've learned about myself. Um, I would say, I would say two things. How number one, how much I value stability. <laughs> uh, you know, and, and number two, how much I need to be in a in a people business. I mean, I I um, you know, short of learning all the insurance stuff, I mean, certainly yeah. learned how important it is and how it works. Um, you know, but it was it was really I, I'll tell you, I'll, I'll make it this. It gave me everything I was looking for in other industries, but couldn't find. I couldn't put it all together. This is the industry that put it all together for me, which which was a surprise. That's a great good one. one. That's a that's a good one. That's a great. I like that. And we'll end the show. And that's a great answer. Mike McGilvray, thanks for being on the show. My pleasure, James. Again, thanks for having me. And please check out Pathfinder on on IAB Cal's website. Yes, that's IABCal.org, folks. Uh, go ahead and check that out. And Mike, you're wonderful. Where can where can they find your business? They want if they want to you know use you for business. Uh, Shaw Moses Mendenhall. Uh, you can go to our website. Um, you can Google us, Sean Moses Mendenhall and Associates, and I'm on there under uh, all of the agents. Uh, I am right there. They can find me there. Um, I do have a podcast coming out soon called How Insurance Works, and we're releasing that. I think, in the Wait a minute. Week. I didn't know that. Yeah. I, got, oh, I got a podcast coming out. I have a podcast coming out in the next two weeks, so geared more toward the clients, but uh, that'll be coming out soon. So I think we have our first teaser episode up on Apple Podcasts. But you know, Congratulations to my world. Thank you. Congratulations. Um, what, what, what's you. the name of it again? What's the name of it again? How it's called How Insurance Works. Okay, I have to check that to check that podcast. Okay. So, okay. to type it in, you have to, I think, then with my name works with my okay, okay. I have to check that to check that out. So check that out. Oh, please do. Let's do that. Just getting started. So, maybe one day, maybe I can get to where you're at. 
<laughs> you, you will. You'll get that. I started from scratch. I started from scratch one. I mean, 13 years ago. But I started exactly. from scratch. But you're going to be going fine. You're going to be good. So it's a, it's a, it's a great, it's a great service you're giving people in all seriousness. So good. I'm glad you're doing it. And so it's, it's going to help a lot of people in your podcast. I hope so. I mean, that's the goal. That's the good. I'm James Lott Jr. You can follow me. We're all James Lott Juniors are sold at James Lott Jr. on all social media platforms. This podcast, IAB Cal Voices, is on every streaming service you can think of from iHeartRadio to Spotify, Apple, Deezer, anything. Wherever you find it, like, subscribe, follow, hit that button, and share it with anybody you think needs to hear this, who's in the industry or not. Um, now, also, the video version is on my online network, JLJ Media, where I have over 35 shows, ranging from Star Wars to soap operas and everything in between, including this one. This one has a, a playlist. You can watch past episodes, and his episode is up there now. Um, and you can see what's going on in insurance fields. And we talk about people with behind the scenes and in front of what's going on in insurance. Uh, so subscribe while you're there also. Show the love. Share with anybody needs to hear this or see this, of course. And everyone, please stay safe, try to stay sane during this time period, and we'll see you next time.